Hello and welcome to Matrix Live, the show to tell you everything about Matrix, the open protocol for decentralized and secure communications. Today, my guest is Rick, VP of SaaS at Element, one of the masterminds behind Element Matrix Services, more widely known as EMS. Rick is here with us to talk about the launch of a new product in the EMS offering, Chatbox. Rick, what is Chatbox? All right. Yes. Yeah, so Chatterbox is an attempt to create a completely embedded, minimalistic element client. So basically, we wanted to create something that was as quick and simple as possible to embed into your, um, your web pages, into your web applications, into potentially even mobile clients via web UIs to allow uh, people to very quickly and easily interact with Matrix. This is very similar to a lot of other products that you might have seen out there, or at least that's the goal, is to try and give you this very typical little speech bubble in the bottom of right-hand corner of um, a web page somewhere that you can click on and start chatting with someone. Um, typically, that's been quite hard to do with Matrix because we have to jump through quite a lot of hoops in terms of setting up accounts, uh, accepting terms and conditions of the server, uh, server discovery, and all of those bits and pieces. So what we try to do here is really kind of minimize it as much as possible, make it very quick and simple, click on the button. The end user doesn't even need to know that they're using Matrix and that they can be up and chatting with you um, in a matter of seconds. Building products based on Matrix when you don't even know that you are using Matrix as an end user. I like that. Uh, yeah, they use, I think there used to be a project called Empathy Rail back in the days, so it's something that is fairly old and that was abandoned eventually, I think. Uh, is Chatterbox just a rebranding of Embedded Rails with a few updates, or is it a completely different project? Yeah, really good question. I mean, there's been lots of attempts to do similar things to this in the past, and often this has fallen down due to the inherent complexity of a lot of the clients. Uh, the clients support huge numbers of different things, Element and previously Riot, quite heavy weight. Um, so it's been quite hard to get that all squished down sufficiently uh, to fit into a very, very light chat app. So this is a completely new, brand new approach to trying to do so. And what we've done is we have really leveraged the power of the Hydrogen client, which uh, for those of you who don't know, is a very lightweight, uh, progressive web app um, that has been built from the ground up um, as something uh, very new and lightweight, um, not necessarily offering all of the features of Element from day one. And they've taken a very different approach um, with the architecture on this and massive hats off uh, to Bruno and Midhun who have been working predominantly on this product since uh, their kind of brainchild. Um, it's a very, very modular approach uh, to building a client. And one of the thing, great things that that allows us to do is just take the components that we need for a specific application and package them up so that um, we're not having to include and bundle huge amounts of other stuff that aren't relevant to this kind of use case. So for Chatterbox specifically, the design is intended to work with just a single room on the Matrix Home server side. So as a user, you pop open um, your Chatterbox window, Click, get started, and you're automatically in a room. It doesn't need to have the room selectors and all of the other bits and pieces that go with that, and it's just a timeline and a text entry box. So really, really simple and lightweight. Right. I know one of the focuses of, uh, of Hydrogen uh, was to be especially backwards compatible with a lot of browsers to support all browsers. I think it supported old versions of Internet Explorer uh, back when it was called Brawl. I don't know if, if that's still the case. Um, I have one question about that. So you mentioned the hydrogen SDK. So I guess there is a little more than just shrinking uh, hydrogen down and, and putting it putting it in an iframe. Um, did you what did you have to do to create Chatterbox? Did you have to go through it through design iterations? Yeah. So um, lots of work with um, Bruno and the gang on this, but basically we had to do a bit of work to pull apart some of the components of hydrogen. It's always been a very modular um, framework, but to really kind of mature the developer experience there, such that we can just use some components independently of others. Uh, this has been a quite a fundamental design decision um, with hydrogen and going forwards, it gives us lots of powerful uh, things that we can do using hydrogen as a component SDK effectively. 
So letting us use the different components, so the timeline, the message editor and things independently of each other and just kind of pulling them together as needed. Um, so there was a bit of work to reorganize that stuff and to continue building out the um, the APIs and the developer experience of pulling those things together. But this has now turned into the first, um, I guess, reference, reference application of using hydrogen in this way as a component SDK. And I hope that in the future, there'll be many more examples of this kind of thing where we can say, hey, we need a customized lightweight matrix client that has features A, B, and C. And we can just use these baseline components from hydrogen to pull it together quite quickly and say, oh, well, we need a, a video widget there or whatever happens to, to be needed. Okay, so I knew about the matrix JS SDK, which is a, a sort of engine in JavaScript to build clients, full-fledged clients on top of a sort of pre-existing brain. Uh, what is the difference between hydrogen SDK? Uh, the hydrogen SDK has a built-in UI that you can customize easily. Right, so I mean, they're very different kind of levels of SDK. Um, the JS SDK is a much more typ typical developer SDK where you know you have um, a JavaScript library, you can have function calls that you can make uh, to build into your, your application with whatever language you're using, or sorry, whatever framework you're using and kind of make calls to register a new user or join a room or those sorts of things. So very low level SDK. When we talk about the hydrogen SDK, we're talking about a much higher level of abstraction. So hydrogen provides uh, a, a base, basically a library of different components that you can use and say, well, I want my uh, hydrogen timeline component and I want to embed it into my application um, in this way and maybe pull together uh, a people selector or room directory or some of those sorts of things. So really treating them at a much higher level uh, abstraction. Back to the product perspective, um, do you know who could be interested in Chatterbox? Uh, do, do you know if some people are actually interested in Chatterbox or was it just a pretext uh, to use the Hydrogen SDK and to show that it can be used to build actual products? Yeah, definitely. There's very, very many real world applications for, for Chatterbox. I think initially we're primarily targeting people who need to have lightweight uh, interaction with their potential customers and potential contacts to their website. So this could be uh, technical support, someone popping up on your website, hey, I need to talk to someone, find out how I might get my account login credentials or a pre-sales inquiry, those sorts of things where you just want a channel to communicate with um, with customers without them having to go through a lot of complicated account setup and those sorts of things. So in the Chatterbox mode, you click your little um, modal in the bottom right hand corner, get your Chatterbox window and start typing away. Hi, sales. How do I do a thing? Now, um, there are two halves to this. The first half is the actual client itself, which we talked about, the chatterbox bit. The other parts are what happens behind the scenes on the server side. So we're doing a lot of things on uh, in EMS land, in the, in the commercial product side of things to make it quick and simple to build out the business logic and the flows to get those customers through to the right people. Um, so at the moment we have things like, um, um bots to invite people who are available or in a, a predefined group into that room to start responding um, and there's a couple of different modes that you can use uh, to choose who should be joined to that so it could be uh, everyone in a particular group it could be round robin okay uh rick's had a load of um questions recently so we'll choose the next person in the list and so on and then further down the line we plan to add a lot more of those kind of um, business logic level features to the server side, but that's independent of the um, of the open source client side of things. Right. So, talking of the open source client side of thing, is it possible for me to self host it, and what do I need to set up first before I can get my own um, chatbox? Uh, because I probably need to have a matrix instance I plug chatbox to. Yeah, exactly. So chatbox is just another matrix client um, and it is open source and it's free and available for people to use. Um, the client is completely decoupled from uh, the commercial offering that we provide and some of the more um, enterprise focused business features that we have on the back end. So if you want to give it a go, um, then you can go and find the, the repo, download the code and host an instance of Chatterbox yourself. Um, this is a really, really lightweight um, web application that you just kind of run somewhere. 
as the actual kind of chatterbox client component. Then on the front end, all you need to do is go and find your website, um, edit a small amount of HTML in your web page to basically insert a script and say, hey, I want my chatterbox to appear here, pointing it at your home server. So yeah, you do need to have a matrix home server to point it at. Um, once you've done that, then effectively, when someone visits your website and they click on the button, they'll get this chat window and they'll be popped into um, the, the room that you've specified in your chatterbox config in that little config fragment or on the um, on a hosted config file to tell them which rooms they should join. Now, obviously, there's a little bit of work that needs to be done um, to configure your server to accept registrations from a, a predefined chatterbox namespace. But other than that, um, yes, you can use it and try it out yourselves. Chatterbox namespace, is it app services behind the scenes? Yeah, so um, we have a um, we have two different layers of things. One one is you can just basically make your home server open for public registration, people to register on your home server, and to be able to say yes, Chatterbox should be allowed to register new users, and that's probably the most common case for the community. Um, on the enterprise side, um, we have a custom module that allows Chatterbox to um, register users within a specific namespace and to control what those users can and can't do. Effectively, users registering through that route can only um, join a single room. And that's a security feature and basically minimizes um, the scope of what people you're interacting with can do on your home server. So that's kind of part of the, the business logic side that we provide as the enterprise product. All right. So we have been describing a, a sort of client that can be used to be an embedded chat assistant. Uh, this is something that is not new. What makes it especially different or appealing, uh, different from the Basilion existing solutions out there in the in the wild? Yeah. So uh, as you say, loads of other people have similar kind of products to this. I mean, uh, you know, Intercom, uh, Rocket Chat provides something similar to this as well. I think that this is relatively novel. Um, from basically benefiting from all of the features that Matrix provides. Uh, you know, a lot of the chat systems that you have at the moment um, in, of this kind of nature won't be fully end-to-end -end encrypted and won't um, allow people on the, on the server side to have, um, you know, Matrix-style rooms and Matrix end-to-end -end encryption benefits. So it's really taking something that is very complicated under the hood with lots of added benefits and making it appear simple and straightforward for the uh, the average everyday consumer. Awesome. Um, I was wondering, is it done or are there shiny new things uh, in the works for a V2 or V1.1? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, definitely not done. What we've done at this point is produce the the, the basic client um, and some uh, initial set of server side features uh, that we could provide. Um, but there's a whole array of things that we're really excited to get working on in the future. And um, these can include, I, mean, I don't want to give too much away at this point, um, because I think some of them could be really interesting, uh, especially for some of our enterprise customers down the line. But I think a lot more integration with um, enterprise uh, systems, um, availability of users, and um, potentially uh, auto response um, scripts and those sorts of things that will be really useful for high volume traffic. So say, for example, if you've got customers who are interested in uh, accessing frequently asked questions through uh, the chat interface, um, or if they need access to uh, specific documentation, uh, contact details, those sorts of things. I could see uh, something interesting. So we, we had a FOSDEM talk uh, by Oleg uh, about how to create a chat box, a chatbot with Raza. Uh, so it's a way to teach uh, to teach um, conversations with a bot so it can spot patterns or spot ki kinds of questions uh, and answer automatically. I could imagine uh, people from the community doing building this sort of bots and plugging them into a chatbox instance to get a sort of autoresponder. You have been talking about a module that is on EMS on the commercial offering uh, so far. So do you rely on that or do you have something that is built by EMS with some flexibility workflows to how, how can I create easily a bot uh, using the offering? Yeah, so the 
Chatterbox will work with any normal application services and any normal bots. So there's no, there's nothing super secret or special about that. And we definitely want to build out the bot and server side functionality for these kinds of auto response use cases. Um, what we are doing in EMS land is just going to be uh, another um, bot in some ways. It's not going to be building on any of the existing art out there, but we have some pretty cool ideas for how we can make that flexible customers and kind of really make it so that it's as easy to use from a customer point of view as possible. All right. Do you have any final thoughts to conclude the episode? Um, not really. I mean, I'm really excited to see what the community make of this and what potential customers and enterprises are, who are looking at this kind of thing and thinking that it might be useful uh, might feel. Please do feel re free to reach out to me and uh, ask me if you have um, specific uh, questions about the enterprise components of it and where that might be useful and the direction we might be going in. Um, and I'm also keen to see what the community do with the um, the client side of things and um, how they can extend the open source um, components. So um, yeah, good luck. I hope this is interesting to people. I hope that it um, builds upon what everyone's been asking for because I think it's been requested uh, for a long, long time and I'm really excited to see how it progresses as a product. Brilliant. I'm excited to see what the community is going to do with it too. Uh, on, on two levels, uh, I'm excited to see what use cases people can have for Chatterbox itself. Uh, and I'm excited to see if the community is going to do something similar and use the Hydrogen SDK to build all the products uh, similar or completely different uh, than Chatterbox, but to build things on top of Matrix with even less effort than if you had to write everything from the ground up. Rick, thanks a lot. And Matrix Live, I'll see you next week. See you around.